Hello everyone, welcome to my first video on YouTube. My name is Rosine Taylor. I am an artist by passion and a developer by profession. I've been working in the field of sports analytics since almost four years now and uh, working in the field of deep learning, machine learning uh, is what excites me every day. Today we are going to talk about GPU training on Apple M1 Max or Apple Silicon Max. I'm not going to bore you with all the Apple M1 shenanigans, what they are and whatnot. Uh, but we do know that uh, GPU training or native training of deep learning models on our Apple M1 machines uh, was a pain till now. But with the release of uh, TensorFlow 2.5, native training utilizing our GPUs is now possible. So the agenda of this video is pretty simple. What we are going to do, we are going to set up the environment, install TensorFlow 2.5. We are also going to install a plugin called TensorFlow Metal, which will help us to utilize our GPUs to train the model. We'll write a simple neural network in TensorFlow that will train the MNIST dataset again that comes uh, with TensorFlow. And uh, we'll see the GPU training in action on my Apple M1 MacBook Pro. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to run the same code on Google Colab and uh, I think it provides Tesla T-Force. So we'll have a little quick comparison about the training time on Tesla T4 provided by Google Colab versus the Apple M1 Max, uh, the GPU training time. So let's get started. So we are at my desktop now and let me first show you about my Mac. It's an Apple M1 MacBook Pro and running Big Sur. So on the left side, I've opened the setup guide and on the right side, I have my terminal open. I've already gone through the installation steps so you can follow these and trust me, it's as simple as just copy pasting these commands and you will be good to go to install and set up the TensorFlow environment. So the first step they, as they say for Apple Silicon, is to install the mini forge uh, for Mac OS ARM64. So download it, install it, copy paste it, and it will be done. And after that, you install the TensorFlow dependencies. So if I copy paste it over here, for you, it will install the dependencies, but for me, it will say all packages are already installed, as you can see. Now, the second step in the process is to install TensorFlow for macOS. Again, for me, it will be already installed, so requirements are already satisfied. And finally, we want to install TensorFlow Metal, which will enable us to communicate with our GPU. I'm also going to use Jupyter Lab uh, to write the code, and the reason for it is I can save it as a notebook and import it to the Google Colab so that uh, we can compare the training time results. Dash so, um, M pip all Jupyter Lab. So installation is done, and we can run it with Jupyter Lab. So now let me maximize this. So now we are in my Jupyter Notebook dashboard. Let's open a new kernel, and first of all, let's see if we can access our GPU or not. So I'm copy pasting some code that I've already written. If I run this, see we have our TensorFlow version 2.5, Keras version 2.5 and GPU is available. So let's start with our little cute little experiment. Firstly, let's do our library imports. Okay, copy pasting it. Not really interested in typing all these things up. Uh, the second step is we are going to download the MNIST data, load it, split it into training and testing, and reshape it and normalize it. Again, if you don't know all these things, uh, there are lots of tutorials on YouTube that explains TensorFlow, Keras, models, convolution models, and a lot of other things. 
so I hope uh, that's not a problem here. Thirdly, let's define our model architecture. And uh, it's a simple, really very simple model. As you can see, the input shape is 784. Why? Because MNIST is a 784 uh, dimension data set. Activation is sigmoid. We are using 256 nodes. And then we have 128. And then finally, we are predicting 10 classes using softmax. Why 10? Because again, it's a handwritten 10 digit 10 class data set. It would happen. Oh, do I have a typo? Great. Okay, let's fix it. I think it should do it now. Yeah, metal device set to Apple M1. Great. Now let's write our model.compile model.fit and let's train our model so model.compile we are getting categorical cross entropy we are using stochastic gradient as our optimizer learning rate 0.01 we are using 100 epochs so the batch size of 128 i have simple time checks of how much time we are going to take all right Let's run this. So I'm going to speed this process up uh, and let's meet after the model is trained. So guys, as you can see, we have finished our training. Uh, the validation accuracy is 0.92, not that good. Total time taken is 349 seconds and we had 100 epochs, so it boils down to 3.49, meaning around three and a half seconds per epoch. Now let's just evaluate it, okay? So just copy paste again for the predictions and we'll see the classification report. So our accuracy is uh, F with an F1 score of 92. And if you want to see the plots, we can do that thing. So as you can see, the training loss and the accuracy, how it's performing. This entire code is uh, available on my GitHub. You can see that the TensorFlow Metal Test Repository is already there. And for the Colab experiment, we can you can just directly go here and open this entire notebook in Google Colab. You can choose the runtime type to be GPU. Connect it. Okay, so let's quickly test what uh, GPU we are getting. can do NVIDIA SMI and we can see it run anyway so we have our Tesla T4 I'll quickly run the training over here and we can see the average time taken on Tesla as well training has finished on the Tesla T4 Google Colab and I've quickly prepared this graph that shows the time taken per epoch on the two machines Tesla T4 takes almost around two seconds while Apple M1 takes around three seconds. Uh, not that much of a difference uh, to compare, but uh, these are just the initial thoughts. As we saw, there is not much of a difference between the M1 Mac or the Tesla T4. They are pretty much comparable. And uh, here are my closing thoughts. I'm really happy that we now have the support to train our networks natively using the power of our gpus on apple m1 max and i do hope that other frameworks like pytorch come up with the support really soon with this i'm concluding this video let me know what you guys think i apologize if i would have made some mistakes it's my first youtube video and i would really love to hear what you guys have to say thank you until next time